Carl Jung said that the basis of happiness is figuring out what you believe and acting according to it, living according to it. That the basis of unhappiness is living not in accord with your own morals. Hmm. In other words, I believe these things are right and wrong, and I'm systematically violating them. It's so incredibly empowering when I talk to a young woman or man, and I say, for example, what do you think is a decent way to treat a member of the opposite sex when you're on a date? And they'll tell me, and I say, are you acting according to that? And they're like, no. I said, that's why you're unhappy, according to Carl Jung, but also according to common sense. Once you know what that is and say, I'm going to start acting and living according to my own principles, your life starts to change. Why is that? So say someone right now is, for example, cheating on their partner, mm -hmm. but they know... And they're against cheating. They're against cheating. They know it's Because everybody's against that, yeah. cheating, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The betraying of, somebody mm -hmm. you love. Everybody's against betraying somebody yeah, you love. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's actually natural law, if you believe there's any natural law. Why is, why, why is that making them unhappy? That's making them unhappy because that's doing violence to their own sense of propriety. You're hurting yourself. You know, the most ancient wisdom traditions and religious traditions, when they talk about sin, you know, in Islam and Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism and name the religion, there's a concept of sin, right? Mm. Sin in almost every religious tradition is not offending God. It's hurting yourself. It's self-destructive behavior. You're doing something not in accord with the way that you want to live. And in so doing, you're weakening yourself. You're making it harder for you to understand, understand yourself as a good person, as mm. a person of integrity, as an upright person, which we actually need. And, and again, there's a lot of, go back to the social psychology research on this. We need to see ourselves as good people. It goes back to your point as well about helplessness and agency, because if I know that that is bad, but I can't seem to stop myself doing it, yeah. I'm telling myself that I'm low agency and I'm helpless. I'm a victim of my own sin. Yeah, I'm a victim of my own weakness. I'm a victim of my own impulses. And so this is one of the reasons that people will be like, I hate how I eat. Mm. What are they actually saying? They're not saying that I, I hate, you know, I mean, like I, I'm a sugar fiend. I love, I just can't get enough of it. You I don't drink both. alcohol, but I, drink, I eat tons of sugar. I eat lots of sugar. I shouldn't do it. Now, it doesn't offend my sense of propriety, to be sure, right? But I could get to the point where I'm so unhealthy that I hate that about myself because I'm actually hurting myself, but I'm being controlled by my impulses. This getting in line with your own views and making a plan, and this is where the New Year's resolutions about taking off the weight actually m makes sense because it's not about the ab veins, it's about being morally consistent with your own view of the person that you want to be is what this comes down. But you can't do it till you lay it out, until you actually put it in black and white. Write down your moral philosophy. I don't care how dumb it is. Write down your moral philosophy and say, make a plan to start living according to it. That's the base of the pyramid. There's two other parts, okay? The second part is a contemplative tradition, is contemplation. You need more contemplation so that you can experience transcendence. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, right? Um, this is why everybody wants to do mindfulness meditation. That's all that is, is basically is sitting still without your phone and, 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 and focusing on being alive. So and there are a lot of ways to do it. There's informal ways to do it. My colleague, Ellen Langer, if you had her on the show, no. Super interesting person. She actually was the one who brought the concept of mindfulness to the West about 30 years ago. Wow. She wrote a book called Mindfulness. She's a, she was the first woman tenured in the psychology department at Harvard. She's wow. phenomenal. And she's just absolutely first rate. And, and she says that mindfulness is best practiced if you're sitting on the train by putting away your phone, putting your hands in your lap and looking out the window. Can they listen to this podcast while they do that? Because No. <laughs> you should listen to the podcast, but not during those periods. Okay. And start with five minutes of, a, of, of just simple contemplation of life. Now, there are other ways to do it. Prayer is a really good way to do it, too. Religious traditions are excellent at doing it, but people in a distracted world don't do that at all. You need to be in your head. You need to stop distracting yourself and systematically stop distracting yourself because in your default mode network you'll actually start to think about things that actually matter, including the things that are in the fundamental moral basis that you've, that you've started to formulate. You need contemplation. I was thinking about this last night. I don't know why I was thinking about this, but that's how weird I am. I was thinking about why I don't pray anymore because mm. I grew up in a Christian faith until the age of about 18. Are and you we, still Christian? No. Mm. And every time we had dinner, for my whole childhood, the family sat around the table, one of us would, would pray. 
and we just be, basically give thanks for things we're you know grateful for. Right. And I stopped praying because I no longer have the Christian faith. But but I was thinking last night, it doesn't mean I need to give up the prayer, which is just an exercise in gratitude to be thankful for the nature of my life. And that would serve if and I don't have to pray to something. I can just pray for gratitude. Well, right? you can contemplate. You can yeah. contemplate the source of your gratitude. So gratitude listing is a really important way for you to focus uh, on the the we're, we're resentful creatures because we have a negativity bias. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to pay attention to the negative things in our lives disproportionately because that tendency serves us for survival. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you know, you pay attention to the worst thing that happened at the dinner, not the best thing that happened to the dinner for a reason. I mean, we've evolved to the snap of the twig behind you does not make you think, oh, Beth, that's my friend. Right? <laughs> so it, that, that's just how we're evolved. And the way to not that let that become maladapted is for you to contemplate the sources of your gratitude, which are incredibly abundant. Now, the reason you stop praying is because you don't believe there's anybody on the other end of the line. Listening, yeah. Yeah, you think that you're, it's like the ghost phone in Japan. After the, after the, the tsunami, the earthquake and tsunami, a guy set up a telephone booth that's not connected where the phone is not connected and 30,000 people have gone and picked up the phone and talked to their dead relatives. That's the ghost phone. Mm. And um, that's not satisfying for you with, a, with respect to prayer because your kid version of religion was the reason you're doing that is because you're talking to God. You've got a direct transmission mechanism to God and now you don't think that's actually the case. So you stop doing the contemplation mm -hmm. right now. It's probably worth think rethinking a, an adult version of your faith as opposed to being put off by the a lot of people are really put off by the kid version of their faith it's like really yeah like the all the weird and stuff and, and stuff doesn't stuff make like it doesn't make sense but a, a, m most likely according to the data you're going to start becoming interested in your christian faith again as you get older it doesn't mean you're going to have the same faith that you had on the contrary you probably won't but you'll start being on like you know there's certain things i miss about that and and life actually is messy and there is suffering that's hard to explain, but there's lots of things in life that are hard to explain. And maybe there's something in there that I didn't understand before. So openness to that. I'm not saying for sure, but I'm saying just be open to it. And then the very top is wisdom. And that requires reading or, or you know, uh, the, the accumulation of knowledge. Not everybody's a big reader. And there's so many different ways to get good information at this Podcasts. point. Podcasts. Podcasts, for example. But the whole point is is reading or, or acquiring information in the wisdom tradition. So, uh, you know, read the Stoic philosophers. Read the Nicomachean Ethics of Aristotle. Read the Bible. Read, read, read. And start with 15 minutes a day of that kind of reading, which you can go years saying, I wish I read it, and you don't. Right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. We'll spend all this time scrolling Instagram when we can spend just 15 minutes a day reading the meditations of Marcus Aurelius and, and the letters of Seneca. And they're incredibly enriching, right? It's like, whoa, boom, starting at 15 minutes a day. So do the work. What do I believe? Spend some time in contemplation and do the reading. Your life's about to change. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.